Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'll be sharing some workflow tips using Stable Diffusion as well as showcasing the new Photoshop plugin developed by Abdullah Al-Faraj. You can think of this video as the middle ground between an unnarrated time lapse and a full-on comprehensive video. The example image that I'm working on is part of a larger personal project, and another video about it is planned. It will focus on using a foolproof, efficient workflow that utilizes a combination of 3D techniques to create a reusable base plate, which can then be painted over with 2D painting skills. If you're not that confident in painting, that's where Stable Diffusion comes into play, as it can use the inpainting features to replace parts of the image that you would like changed. However, and unfortunately, not all of the artwork is finished, so I'm sitting on quite a bit of unedited footage still. If you're interested, please stay tuned for that video. Before I talk about testing out the new Stable Diffusion plugin for Photoshop, I want to give some extra context. In the subsequent parts of the video, I'm using a merged in-painting model, which consists of my own personal trained Dream Booth models and the Runway 1.5 in-painting model. I saw this Reddit post a few weeks ago, and the thread talked about a method to add in-painting channels to base 1.5 models. You can find my uh, trained Dream Booth models in the video description, and I'll also show some text-to-image examples of them. So this is a retroactive tip, but I want to mention it near the beginning of the video in this training process section. A few weeks ago, around the beginning of December, it became possible in Automatic 11.11's repository to merge standard models with in-painting models. This fit my use case as I used the SD 1.5 pruned checkpoint to train my Dream Booth models. It'll be faster to show what I'm talking about. Here in the checkpoint merger, I'm going to be using the add difference method here and set the multiplier to one. And maybe sure, I'll say that's float 16. It's personal preference. And in the primary model, put the inpainting 1.5 checkpoint, so like that. And in the secondary model, put the checkpoint of your choice. So in my case, it'll be one of the dream booth models I trained. So line brush V2 checkpoint. And lastly, for the tertiary model, put the base 1.5 stable diffusion checkpoint. For me, I believe that's this one, V15 prune checkpoint. And to keep things clean and consistent, I'm just going to name this line style dash in painting. And everything here looks good. Double check and sure, run. So it looks like the checkpoint merged and saved without an issue here. This is one of the models I used on my 3D renders to generate more stylized artwork. Before I get into the Photoshop plugin, I just want to give some background information. This current image that we're all looking at is the base render from Blender Cycles of the personal project I'm working on. And after applying a plethora of the uh, techniques I've mentioned in previous videos using Stable Diffusion, I've gotten it to this point. So I moved from the sky to the background mountains to the ground that the line's standing on and the line itself. What's left is the foreground elements such as the character, and I'll be using the Photoshop plugin to see how it matches up uh, with the Stable Diffusion web UI functionality. And now I want to introduce another tool in the workflow. It's a Photoshop plugin developed by the GitHub user Abdullah Al-Faraj. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, he has his own tutorial video about how to use the plugin, but I'll also show a little bit of how I use it. So to use the plugin, first you need a base image, which I already have here. It's my flatten progress from the other Photoshop document. On top of that, I've baked down some white masks that I'll need for the process, notably the face, uh, the hair, 
and the eyes or I in this case. Now in the plugin, uh, select the model that you want to use. For me, I'm going to start with the fantasy style in painting. It's my go-to. And then go to uh, down here, there's the in painting option. Click that. And next to generate the masks that it's going to use, you have to make your white mask visible and then draw, make sure your layer is selected and draw a rectangular marquee selection over it. So to do that, you just select the rectangular marquee tool and then press shift as you're dragging it. And now you have this um, box. Once you have that, you can go over to the plugin menu and click on init in paint mask and it'll start doing its thing. Let's just wait for it. And we should be seeing some things show up. And yeah, there you go. Um, sometimes the application and the plugin gets a little buggy and I think it's mentioned on his uh, GitHub page, but if you cannot quick export like up here, if you go file, quick export, quick export, if that doesn't work, then you have to restart Photoshop because I think the plugin depends on this functionality. Okay, so now that I've gotten this to um, create my mask, I'm going to change the steps to 50. Um, for mask content, I'm going to change it to original and denoising, I'll keep it like maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.15. And I'll change my sampler to Euler. It's just what I prefer. I'm using the fantasy style in painting model, which is my own model merged with the 1.5 model for in painting. And now I'll put in the prompt. This is, this is the prompt. And I'm using a textual inversion from Huang Guang Qian. Um, and let me find my negative prompt. Okay, it should be this. And if everything is in order, I can run generate and show how it works. So I'll try this for now. Hopefully, I get something decent and on my stable diffusion okay there we go so something happened if you couldn't tell there was this is the new image that's created this is the old this is the new it's a very subtle difference uh, depends how much I want to change it but already it looks like it's a lot more coherent in the scene and less CG, which is fantastic. Very powerful. Um, I can also hide this and I can generate several, but I'm going to play around with upping the denoising strength. One thing to note is that in my stable diffusion setup, let me open it up. In stable diffusion here, my in painting mask conditioning strength, mask strength up here is set to zero, which is very important, which means I'm basically I'm doing a style transfer. Okay, back to this denoising 0 0.4, generate again. Okay, so another version. Yeah, it's working as intended. The next thing I want to try is uh, the wave in the foreground. So this greenish white foam thing. So I select that layer shift drag with the marquee tool. I can't select all of it, unfortunately. 
So I'll go with this for now and then init and paint mask as always. Wait for that to finish. And as you can see, it's changing here. And there we go. This looks like everything's ready. I have my, I turned up the resolution to 1024 square and in paint at full resolution. And in my prompt, I have line brush and ocean waves. Let's see, maybe I'll add some more like aquatic environment. Let me check the denoising. 0 0.5. Okay. Let's go. And this is what my command prompt looks like. Okay, something happened. Maybe I'll turn the denoising strength to 1 and change the in-painting conditioning mass strength as well. What if I go all the way to one? It's an experiment. And then denoising is at one as well, so this would probably give something really wacky. Okay, so yeah, it completely like washed out everything there because I changed the in-painting mass strength. I don't want that. I'll keep it around 0 0.15. Change back to fantasy style in-painting. Okay, we got something a little bit more expressive after using the fantasy style model. If you compare it original. This actually looks a little bit cooler in my opinion. I will turn up the in-painting mask conditional strength to like 0 0.35 this time. It's just a testing out kind of thing. Like if I go all the way to 1, it's basically image to image. You can think of it that way. Okay, so if I turn up the in-painting even more, so this is original and then like this. So it might be too, it's too much for me, but you can see the power of this tool already. So yeah, that's it for the testing. Of course, I'll be testing it on my own, but I wanted to make a video about it and introduce this very powerful tool in my opinion. Thanks for watching.